Welcome to the short video that shows how easy and quick it is to install an instant access point. The instant access point has finished booting and now starts transmitting a radio service called by default instant that is not secure. We're going to log in in order to access the configuration interface of the access point. We will now check the settings that were provided. What we can see is that the access point gave an IP address and a default address. It is on this default address that we will connect to configure the IAP. 172.31.98.1 to access the configuration interface. We are going to authenticate with the default settings and when you first start you have to select the country to comply with local radio parameters. The configuration interface gives more information. Firstly, the number of network services that are broadcast, so by default the basic service called instant, and the number of access points in the cluster, at the moment there's only one, and the number of connected clients. Only my computer is connected on the access point in the cluster. We will now create new services. A guest access service, we'll call it visitor access, this service will be broadcast with a web-based authentication method for users who are not known in the authentication database. The IP address will be provided by the controller. We now have the opportunity to customize the home page by changing the logo, text or by referring to an external server. We can also keep the default page. The advantage there is that everything is already configured. We have created a guest access service that will be broadcast by all access points in the cluster. Here we still have a single access point. We also see that the service has been created. At the same time, we will connect to a second access point that will normally be integrated without configuration and automatically into the cluster. That is the beauty of the solution. We will create a second service, more secure, that will be called Secured Access with encryption settings. Default profiles exist. We choose the profile type Employee that is the most secure. The IP address is always provided by the virtual controller since we do not have a DHCP server on hand. We will choose WPA2 Personal which is already a very secure authentication method. The service will be created. We see now secure access and guest access. The second access point will soon be visible. We remove the default network instant that no longer serves a purpose. We will stop the transmission and at the same time we will close the browser. We will now connect to one of the two networks. We will select the secure access that was just created. A key is requested. We are now connected. we will be able to access the configuration interface. We can see that during the last few moments the second access point has finished booting and has automatically integrated into the cluster without any configuration. By default we can see now two services secure access to which we are connected and guest access where no client is connected. My cluster has two access points and on those two access points there is a client connected, our connection in this case. You can see the address of the client. To extend this network just add access points, connect to the network and they will attach to the cluster taking the same configuration. This is a very simple way to extend network coverage. It's as simple as that. We are now broadcasting our two services and I've finished setting up the network. 
Thank you for following this tutorial on how to configure a network with an IAP, an operation that takes less than 3 minutes.